Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, we have new specs on AMD's upcoming card. This new GPU sucks more power than your entire system. Intel's Alchemist gets benchmarked, and AMD officially showed off their Ryzen 6000 APU. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, we have some new specs on one of AMD's upcoming GPUs. Of course, both Intel, Nvidia, and AMD are expected to announce new graphics cards at CES, and I'll be going over another one of those in a minute. But first, we have a really interesting report on the RX 6500 XT. In a new story from Video Cards, they received some information on the upcoming card, starting with a boost clock at a pretty unbelievable 2815 MHz and the game clock at 2610. What's interesting is that it's actually 9 to 10 percent faster than the RX 6600 XT. Of course, it does have significantly fewer cores at 1024, but still, that's a really high boost. Not only that, but one of the spec sheets that video cards saw stated that it had 18 gigabit per second memory, while other leaks suggested 16, so it could have some really fast memory for the RX 6000 series as well. All in all, AMD's upcoming card is looking more and more interesting. Then again, all that really matters at this point is pricing and availability. It's the new year, and that means making goals, though sticking to them is tough. Luckily, starting your career in the STEM field has never been easier with this video sponsor, Brilliant, the incredible online learning platform that was built from the ground up to teach the STEM field. And because of that, Brilliant teaches you the right way. I'm talking by actually showing you with fun, interactive lessons. Whether that's on your smart device or on their website, Brilliant's a great way to learn wherever you are. Plus, Brilliant's constantly updating their courses to make them even better. They're the place I trust to learn the STEM field, and I know you'll find them amazing as well. So don't wait and visit Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld to get started for free. And for a limited time, the first 200 of you who click the link get 20% off the annual premium. So check that out today. Next up for today, there's a new GPU that can pull more wattage than likely your entire system. If you've been following the channel, you know that a ton of leaks have been swirling about a new powerhouse of a GPU from NVIDIA. The RTX 3090 Ti is expected to come with a much higher TGP compared to the regular RTX 3090, but that 450 watts is nothing compared to one of the upcoming custom models by EVGA, at least if this rumor is right. Originally from the Quasar Zone forums and later reported by PC Gamer, you can see that EVGA's 3090 Ti is expected to require two 12-pin power connectors. Two! Power supply makers have only just recently began offering 12-pin connectors, and that's only one. To get two, I guess you'll just need to use a bunch of 8-pin connectors with adapters. Either way, this configuration gets you a whopping 1,275 watts of power. Of course, just because it can pull that much power doesn't mean it will, but the fact that it includes two would mean it needs at least more than one. And according to ASUS, the 3090 itself can already get up to 900 watts, so this almost doesn't seem all that unbelievable. All I can say is, if you live in the US, you may need to get familiar with your circuit breaker. Next up, we finally have benchmarks on one of Intel's Arc Alchemist GPUs, and let's just say things are getting interesting. Originally found and shared by resident leaker Momomo underscore US, you can see that multiple benchmarks were done on Psy software. As for the GPU that was tested, it's the A380, which at this point only further confirms the naming of Intel's upcoming GPUs. Some newer rumors suggest the higher end parts are something like A5 blank blank or A7 blank blank. Either way, as we've seen, this part is their lowest end 128 EU discrete GPU. But just because it's their lower end part doesn't mean we can't learn something here. From these benchmarks, video cards suggest that the performance is around the RTX 3050 Ti mobile part, and while that may not sound like much, I think it'll be a great spot for an entry-level GPU, especially given Intel parts are all expected to come with support for ray tracing and their XESS tech. Plus, let's not forget that their highest-end model has four times the cores. At the end of the day, Intel's upcoming GPUs are looking nicer and nicer. Let's just hope they're able to make enough to keep the price at MSRP. And lastly for today, AMD officially showed off the first of their upcoming Ryzen 6000 APUs. That's right. 
in a new Twitter post from AMD CEO Lisa Su. She discussed tomorrow's CES event, to which I was given permission to stream. So if you aren't subscribed, definitely make sure to do that for all the CES goodness. Anyway, she also shared an image of her holding a new processor, which is the exact same one recently shared by video cards. That is, AMD's upcoming Ryzen 6000 APU. Remember that these are codenamed Rembrandt and rumored to be based on AMD's 6 nanometer Zen 3 Plus architecture. But of course, the big news is the fact that AMD will finally be moving to their RDNA 2 architecture for the iGPU. And of course, it couldn't come at a better time given the GPU shortages. Not only that, but a recent leak showed us that one of the 6000 APUs could get up to 5 gigahertz stock. And of course, that's just an arbitrary number, but it's a milestone for Ryzen nonetheless, especially given it's a mobile part. Either way, CES is set to be a very impressive event this year. Let's just say I'm excited. So while that does it for today, are you excited for AMD's upcoming APUs? Or let me know what you're most excited for at CES in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.